It's great to be here with all of you. You know, I could read the impressive resume James brings to our news division. I could list his awards. What I really want to tell you is how much we at ABC News genuinely like James. His love of his three boys and his amazing wife, Laura, his love of this country having become a citizen just two years ago. We love his work ethic, his absolute passion for good storytelling, his wry sense of humor. Yes, we love his accent too. And his raised eyebrow, which usually means you had better keep working on whatever story pitch you just hurled at him, because in the end, that is part of his constant effort to make us all better journalists. At the core of James is his fierce and unrelenting defense of the First Amendment, as he has said, against all comers. And the responsibility we bear to make sure our news coverage is straightforward, accurate, and right down the line. I ask a few of our young folks at ABC what they have learned about news and the First Amendment while working at ABC, because it says a lot about who we are and who James is as a leader. Matt Saylor, a digital journalist at ABC News and former Marine Corps infantryman said, freedom of speech does not merely protect the speaker's right to say what they want, but the right of the rest of us to hear it. That last part is often conspicuously missing when censorship is proposed to silence someone. We simply can't have civilization without it. And James makes sure we know that every day. Freda Kahan Kashi, a producer for This Week, said, I think the First Amendment is something that we often take for granted, but not at ABC. Critical thinking is encouraged. We are lucky at ABC to openly share differing, sometimes very strong opinions, but know in the end it is our job to take out opinion and tell the story straight down the middle. Having that balance is something that's encouraged throughout the news division, and I think that makes us stronger. And finally, Erica King, age 25, a production assistant, says, James Goldston has played a significant role in orchestrating a team of journalists who exemplify exactly what freedom of speech means, and I am so grateful to be part of this wonderful ABC News team. As you will see in this video, we all are. There's a great tradition here at ABC News about being straightforward. And James Goldston, by the way, is very straightforward. He is so creative in his thinking. I mean, at the bedrock, it's always about good journalism, good storytelling. It's not lost on me that as I come up those stairs and walk down that hallway to get to this desk that Peter sat here and Charlie did and Diane did. And it's a reminder of the privilege and really, quite frankly, the responsibility that comes with this job. But there's something else that folks at home don't get to see, and that is James our leader who's in that control room, which you can't see, it's up above this video wall here. But every single night as I say, you know, good evening to the country, and James is right there. Maybe it's because he's a new American citizen. <laughs> Maybe it's because he's just discovered apple pie. I don't know. But I do know that he believes in this country and he believes in what we do at a level that reaches purpose. I think all of us understand that we're at a real crucial moment uh, right now for our country and for our professions. And I think James has really captured that in the mission statement he set out for ABC News, straightforward, fact-based journalism, not afraid to challenge anyone or anything or any set of ideas. Every day at ABC News, we are profoundly aware of the importance of the First Amendment, especially now. There isn't a day that goes by that I am not reminded of what James wants us to do and the responsibility we bear. I think that's one of his greatest gifts uh, to the news division is that we're all unmistakable about where he stands and it's up to us to live up to his expectations. You might remember that the president had some choice words for me when we were here at the White House. She's shocked that I picked her. No. It's like in a state of shock. I'm not thinking, Mr. That's President. That's okay. I know you're not thinking. You never do. I'm sorry? No, go ahead. One of the first calls that I got right after it was over was from James. And his message to me was to not back down, just keep doing the job. We live in an age where a lot of opinions are packaged as facts, as news. That's not how we roll with ABC News. And that starts with the leadership of James Goldston, old school. He's about substance. 
There's a fearlessness that James has, not a recklessness, but a fearlessness in pursuit of stories that matter. I work for a company under the leadership of James Goldston, who charges its journalists to find the truth, to open people's minds, to open people's hearts. James has given us uh, a platform. He's given us the space to chase our curiosity, to chase the stories wherever they take us. We've just wrapped an interview with Venezuelan leader Nicolas Maduro, and we were able to press him. And because of decisions made by James, we were able to come here and ask questions reporters in this country could not ask. I think of the look on his face after every big special report, whether it's the Kavanaugh hearings or Michael Cohen. I think of him in the interview room for those six hours we spent with James Comey and just being uh, riveted from a personal perspective here's the most important thing about james when i go into a white house briefing when i go into the oval office and fire questions out of the president it can get hot it can get intense and the key thing is that i know that james goldston's got my back you know when i think of some of the biggest moments you recognize that james has been there every step of the way the first interview with president trump in the white house that moment that town hall with president obama on policing and race in our country the historic moment pope francis in the vatican in all of those moments james is not only our leader but he's present he's there he's always pushing us to to look at a story differently he's bold and he makes you bold that's james well information is life I believe that Tom Stoppard said it in a play, but it's absolutely true that it is the thing that illuminates the path forward. And I always think one of the most interesting things that James does in the regular morning meeting is over and over again, he'll say, anything else? And people who don't work at ABC News might think that just means anything else, but no. It means anything else, as in, is there a fact? that could change our view of the situation? Is there a story you have seen that could turn us in a different direction? Because information is light. And let me introduce James Colston. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you to the RT uh, DNF. Um, thank you to the brilliant Martha Raddatz, as always. Thank you, Martha. Um, we are fortunate to have her and to Pierre. And to the great men and women of ABC News. It's, it's, I, I can't tell you what a, what, a, what a privilege and a joy it is to work. The people you saw in that video, the people that are here tonight from ABC News. Amazing team of people with a passion and commitment for their work. It just shows through in every single thing they do and every call that they make and every piece that we see across all of our platforms every single day. So, so I've had a long relationship with the First Amendment. It's about a century now. <laughs> so my grandfather came to America, came during the Great Depression. He left Southampton on the RMS Aquitania coming to New York. He had no money, not a penny to his name. And he rode on the trains with the Okies. He rode all the way across America looking for work. Ended up, rode all the way to San Francisco. Ended up picking oranges uh, in an orange grove in Los Gatos uh, near San Francisco. And he came back, came back to England, kind of wide-eyed with tales of this great country and its spirit. And they, uh, those stories have always, he, he would tell them to me as a child, those, those stories have always stuck with me. I grew up with a fascination with America and a profound appreciation for its values and a hunger to follow in his footsteps. And so 15 years ago, thanks to ABC News, uh, I got the chance to do that. Uh, so me, my wife, Laura, who's here tonight, um, we had two kids then, got three kids now. Uh, so we wanted to follow in my grandfather's footsteps. So we got on the boat too. We got on the boat, same place in Southampton. Rode the, rode the boat over, got up at dawn as we came into New York Harbor to salute the Statue of Liberty, a great symbol of freedom, um, as we came into New York. 
And, you know, I think it, it, it's, a, it's, a, it's a profound thing when you arrive in a country as a journalist and you arrive in a country where you know that the Constitution itself protects our freedom to be journalists. It's a profound privilege, and I give thanks for it every single day. Um, and a fellow immigrant Canadian called Peter Jennings, uh, he felt exactly the same way. Um, came for the same reasons. And that's why he carried a pocket-sized copy of the Constitution in his back pocket everywhere he went on all those trips he did, all those years. So fast forward 15 years to this moment, an interesting moment. Um, I have to say, you know, came a little wide-eyed to this country. Um, it's painful to me to, to hear journalism and most important democratic freedom called out as fake news. Um, and to witness what feels like, like the pervasive and sometimes the deliberate destruction of our national discourse. And make, make no mistake, we are not the problem. That is my phone ringing. <laughs> I think that's one of my children asking me how it went. I, I will uh, <laughs> tell them. I will tell them shortly. <laughs> That's quite thrown me off. Um, <laughs> make no mistake, we, we are not the problem here. But the threat we face as journalists in this moment is very, very real. We're under sustained attack, and you feel it every single day, from bad actors who are mounting an assault on the truth and an assault on our work every single day. And when you look at the numbers, you know, the numbers are, that have to be troubling to, to, to all of us in this room. 64% of Americans say that false reporting has caused a great deal of confusion about the basic facts of current issues and events. On social media, a, a fake news story, a false story, 70% more likely to be shared than a story that's true. 69% of American adults say their trust in the news media has decreased over the past decade. And that, emo that erosion of trust in media is undermining an industry that we cherish, and it's dividing us um, as Americans. And clearly, we have a lot of work to do to protect our integrity and protect our fundamental freedoms and never, ever take them for granted. Last week, a journalist who works for ABC News, amongst others, Cody Weddle, was arrested in Caracas, in a country that cracks down on straightforward reporting and that doesn't enshrine our rights. He was accused of treason and espionage. He was hooded and interrogated by Venezuelan counterintelligence agents for 12 hours. They raided his apartment, they went through his phone, and they demanded to know the names of his sources and his colleagues. Cody was harassed and detained for nothing more than telling the world what he sees happening in a country gripped by a political and humanitarian crisis. And he's far from the only one. This year, 36 journalists have been arrested in Venezuela. Some of them are still in custody. And we stand with all of them. And of course, we won't be deterred. And tonight, we're back in Caracas with a team, right now, reporting on that story again. And this moment, I feel like it calls for us to be better at what we do than we've ever been before. It is our duty to bolster the real news and to discredit the news that you can't trust. We have to be straightforward in, in doing that. We've got to dig deep, get it right, don't take sides own our mistakes when we make them. And when we do that, I'm optimistic that good journalism will prevail over bad. And indeed, we're seeing like amazing examples, inspiring examples of that this evening. Um, and I believe that with thoughtfulness and care and nurturing, this can truly be a new era of journalistic greatness. Um, and I'm counting on it, and you've, you've heard it, you know, I'm a young American, um, two years old. Um, my family and I, we became American citizens two years ago, and we proudly took an oath to uphold the Constitution. And, you know, it's something that, 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 that we feel every single day. And I know my wife feels the same way. She, she's a journalist too, uh, works as a, as a reporter and an anchor for the BBC. Um, and it's something that we're trying to, to instill in our children too. You know, that the, the, these, these, are, these are profound values. Um, and all of us in this room, I know, are doing everything that we can uh, in support of the First Amendment. And so uh, I'm proud to uh, receive this award on behalf of uh, all of us at ABC News. And uh, thank you all very much indeed. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.